It's a great day for quilting. Join me in the studio as we talk about your first week of the sew along and the blocks that are coming up. Five, six, seven, and eight. <music> everybody to week number two. I am Shanda from along the Continental Divide somewhere in Idaho in such a remote location today that we got a beautiful snowfall last night. It is um, absolutely beautiful outside. It is time to get out the snowshoes and start walking in the beautiful, beautiful snowfall that we had. Um, how did week number one go? I hope you are all, I'm enjoying this process. I don't want it to be a stress uh, activity. I want it to be a learning um, activity. I would like it to be something that you enjoy doing. Like I said in the previous video, if you are a beginning quilter, go slow. Uh, learn. Uh, technique sometimes is more important than the actual doing and getting frustrated with the process. Um, even if you learn how to do a half score triangle, um, that's more than you learned and knew before. So go slow and treat yourself well. Just enjoy the process. Pick one block a week that you would like to do or do all four. Whatever your, your skill level is, just enjoy the process. That's what I'm hoping for with, with myself and to learn during this, this year-long process here that we're going through. Um, again, I'm not permitted to promote any of the products I use. I did contact the author way, way before I even announced this sew along. And Carol was so kind and so um, full of grace. She, she gave her blessing on this project. So thank you, Carol. Um, I am truly enjoying uh, this process for me. And this book is going to teach me a lot. Um, I've never really done something this small, so this is a good a good process for me. Uh, follow me on Pinterest if you'd like. I do have a quilting board out there. I have lots of, of different boards of, of interest that I have, um, but I am out on Pinterest. I do not have Facebook, and I do not have an Instagram account, but um, um, we can still communicate. I know we can. Where there's a will, there's a way. Uh, before I get into this week's blocks, we did blocks we're going to be doing five six seven and eight um couple of hints <laughs> i believe it's block number three here in our line which is would be block number seven uh yeah that's the smallest pieces we will be working with so far they are three quarter inch squares that you will need to do the stitch and flip method on and they turn out pretty small so I would recommend doing block seven when you're fresh, either in the morning or when you're fresh at your sewing machine table or cabinet in your studio, in your sewing room, wherever. Um, they are a bit of a challenge, but uh, hey, we're all in this together. We're going to learn. In the quilting world, we have what we call a scant quarter inch seam. And that literally is a scant quarter inch seam on, on that block number seven. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about more of that block when we get to it here. It's laying over here being humble because I had a lot of errors in that that I had to kind of forgive myself with. But um, make sure you use your scant quarter of an inch. And these blocks, all of them, will finish at four by five. Hence the name of the book, Four by Five Quilt Block Anthology. But the blocks that you will be finishing on your machine before you put them into your quilt top, finish and should be four and a half by five and a half. Um, I just kind of want to clarify that for some of the beginning quilters. So if you feel like your block is way too big, it's not measuring four by five, it won't. It shouldn't. Um, it really should come out just like this, four by five, or excuse me, four and a half by five and a half. And once you put it in a quilt top, 
you will measure it. It will, it will be four and a half or four by five. Let me see if I can get this straight. It's because of our seam allowances. So make sure you're using your quarter of an inch scant um, seam on marker on your sewing machine. And um, yeah, any more than that, you're, you're going to kind of run into trouble. Because this book was authored by two wonderful women, uh, I'm a big proponent of intellectual property. I will not be giving measurements. You will need to have your own book. Um, I think I mentioned that in uh, a video or post two, one or two ago. Um, and I told Carol when I started this endeavor that I would not be giving measurements. You will have to, you will have to buy the book. So um, intellectual property is, um, I protect it. I, I don't believe in taking pictures of somebody else's work. Um, uh, make it your own, make, make it your own. And um, yeah, you'll have to just get your own book. I'm a firm believer in sewing machines that have metal bobbins. Plastic to me are just, um, if that's all you have, then great, use it. I'm, it, it's fine. I prefer the metal bobbins. There's more weight and more substance to them. But in in a week or two ago, I mentioned using Aurafil thread. It's a little more expensive than regular uh, sewing thread or even quilting thread. So I kind of protect my Aurafil thread. I I use it sparingly, let's say. So I have my own bobbin holder. My other one for my regular thread is red. This one is blue. Um, and I keep all my Aurafil in one bobbin thread holder so that I know it's Aurafil. Uh, like I said, I don't just use it to mend with. It's pretty expensive thread and um, I'm pretty stingy with it, I guess I should say. Blocks. Block number five is called Quiver. Love this block. This one is my favorite for the week. I guess I should highlight those. Number six was called Bars. Number seven was called Thread. This is the one that we're going to go over. This one was quite the challenge. And number eight is called Preposition. And because I love English, I love to write. I loved the name of this, like a prepositional phrase. Um, but I loved the name of this block. Um, number five, Quiver. The takeaway from this block was, yes, it was pretty bulky on the back. You can see the way those seams are ironed, but for this week, this was my favorite block to do. Um, it's very unique. I, I what a um, very unique block. I really, really like this block. Number six is bars. This one was super, super simple. This was um, kind of one of those gimmies, <laughs> an easy one that you could um, feel accomplished, like maybe before dinner or before you went to bed or something. This one was really easy. Um, Number seven was the thread. We're going to talk a little bit about that one. Um, need I say three quarters of an inch square. Really, really small to create. Let me put this book down. Really, really small to create that uh, corner of your spool. Definitely scant quarter of inches on these. Um, these were, this is the back. This one was fun. I'm not saying it was hard. It, it, just go slow. Go really, really slow when you're piecing this. Definitely use your 70 needle and some Aurafil thread because there's a lot of bulk and a lot of tiny, tiny pieces in this one. But it is cute. I, I think it's a cute block. Uh, don't look too close because some of the spools have nicks in them. <laughs> That's all I'll say. Um, and then number eight was called Preposition. Um, really cute, fun block. I like the pink and the blue combination. Oh. The first week we did this, we I had somebody ask if I was going to be showing actual work. And starting next week now, as I video what I'm doing, yes, there will be more actual... I can't tape myself or video myself. I can't film myself doing all of the blocks because of my very mountainous area, region. Um, I have some pretty slow upload times. I am almost 150 miles from the nearest Walmart. <laughs> Maybe that's a giveaway. TMI. Uh, so I kind of have to keep these videos kind of short. But I will go into more detail starting next week on one of the blocks that I think may be a problem for some. Uh, really, the only solution I can give is just go slow. Um have really good light 
and keep that scant quarter of an inch. It does help to press your seams open. That was a big help for me um, in, the, in the front part of the book when I was when I was reading you know, the general instructions. One question I would like to throw out there for, for advanced quilters or any quilter is on the thread block, and please comment below, but on this thread block, I went ahead and I, after it was all put together on my final, final iron, um, on my final ironing, I went ahead and I used starch again. I'm just wanting to know if anybody else does that, if it also continues to shrink the fabric, even though it's been starched before, before I cut into it, um, what the general consensus of that comment is. I would like to know if anybody else is starching their blocks after they are put together. Um, I will be stay stitching, and for those of you who don't know what stay stitching is, because I'm a long arm quilter, my machine is right here by me, um, I like it when my clients bring me their quilt tops that are all stay stitched around the whole top of the quilt. Um, we're going to be working with these blocks, and it's going to be a little bit of time before they get put into a quilt top. So I would recommend stitching all the way around the outside of these blocks. It just helps keep them stable. It helps keep them from stretching out um, as you're working with them and touching them and picking them up and showing them to people. It really helps keep these blocks four and a half by five and a half. Once you've done your final trimming, I would stay stitch, just regular stitch, an eighth of an inch in all the way around these blocks. Um, that might uh, help the final outcome of your quilt top. Yeah, but please leave me a message if you start your blocks after you've got them all pieced and sized up, did all your final measurements and your final ironing, let me know. I do use the regular starch that I've been um, mentioning, but my final, on this one, my final starch that I used was that Mary Ellen's Best Press. I do like that. Um, so let me know, let me know in the comments below, please, if you, if you use a final starching or not. Uh, my question of the week, Actually, I should say my, my buzzword for the week is think humble. This block was not easy. Um, it was pretty challenging. And once I show some close-up pictures here, you're going to say, yeah, Shanda, you missed your seam. But I'm sorry, I wasn't going to rip it out. Our quilts are not supposed to be perfect. Um, think humble. This could be our humble block. Um, I enjoy the process. It, when it gets put in a quilt top, you're not going to be able to tell. You really aren't. Um, but think humble not perfection because our quilt tops are not perfect but have a good week i'm going to go snowshoe and then i may come in and quilt but have a great time and like i said um go slow enjoy the process this is not a race um i encourage beginning quilters um there's much you can learn in uh from carol in this book so have a great week mm -hmm.